Captains, my friends, welcome back. I was given the opportunity to design a Star Sector ship. As someone who has absolutely no modding talent, this is a big deal. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the lore, fleet role, design process, officer compatibility, and more of the best ship ever. Why yes, I'm completely unbiased. How could you tell? Now strap yourself in and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm Ironclad Lion, and this is the Leora Class Prototype Destroyer. As a keen eye might observe, this is a ship of the United Aurora Federation. Long story short, Milky offered to make me a ship. I consider this very generous, so I took the design process quite seriously. But even when taking things seriously, it doesn't mean I'm good at it. So I'll show you the finished product first, and then the pain and suffering to actually get there. Let's take a look at the ship lore and fleet role. The Leora was designed post UAF arrival to this sector. While the UAF Navy does not lack large caliber ballistic weaponry or colossal combustible payloads, it was determined a new weapon must be developed, one that could inhibit some of the exotic technologies discovered within the sector. Thus, the Lion's Roar was born. Utilizing the explosive properties of the Breve series, combined with a weaponized byproduct of classified Aurora and research, the Lion's Roar is a tactical fleet disruption weapon. While the direct damage is limited, the potential to dislodge enemy ships from an organized formation is invaluable in large fleet engagements. This newly designed vessel may be one of the first destroyers within the reorganized UAF Navy, but due to complicated production and design costs, the Leora has been given the prototype designation and will not enter main service. The mixed gray and blue paint scheme with gold stripes signify this status. As such, the Leora will be a rare sight in the sector. Now that we know the lore and background of the Leora, how did we actually get here? How was it made? What was the design process? To start with, we know it has to be a UAF ship, so it must adhere to UAF aesthetics and doctrine. Second, I had to determine the ship class. The UAF has many cruisers and capitals to pick from, and I didn't want to bloat the fleet, so one of the smaller classes. When it comes to frigates, I've used several super frigates from other mods over the years. They are fun, well liked by many players, and that's exactly why I didn't choose a frigate. The Destroyer class. Probably the least flown class by Star Sector players. Maybe you would fly a destroyer in the early game, but as soon as you acquire a cruiser or capital, chances are that's your new flagship. I knew designing a destroyer would be a challenge, so I came up with three pillars to guide the process. Pillar 1. The ship must be fun. Designed with the player in mind, the ship must be satisfying to use. Pillar 2. The ship must be impactful. Its presence on the battlefield must be felt, and including it into a fleet will have a noticeable effect. Pillar 3. The ship must be unique. It must fill a role and avoid redundancy within the fleet. I then quickly got to work on the initial blueprint. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't see a problem. It looks perfectly convoluted to me. Based on this masterpiece, Milky quickly put together a Vessa. Milky, you've done it! Is what he probably wanted me to say. Little did he know we were going to be doing this the American way. <laughs> Oil. So now we arrive at the Singa Bessie design, much improved over the original, doing away with the asymmetrical hull design and instead fitting the lion's roar in as a center line built in weapon. The twin cannon being reduced to a single barrel but maintaining an offset opposite the bridge. With a solid hull to work with, it was time to start development on the lion's roar. For this, I had to draft up the weapon blueprint. The lion's roar projectile would have a time detonation, could bounce off shields, and would violently toss ships that got caught in either of its two explosions. These properties we could achieve, but the exact physical aspects of the projectile were tricky. I originally wanted some sort of ball-like projectile that behaved like a heavy pinball, bouncing from ship to ship with full star sector physics, like a missile that has run out of fuel. This unfortunately was not achievable given the current missile code of star sector. The closest we could get was a torpedo, so a torpedo it became. While the lion's roar was in development, it was time for final revisions to the hull. The Singa Bessie 
Pepsi was good, but it wasn't done yet. If you want to know what Milky means when he says pain and suffering, he's most likely referring to this, my finalization document. Upon seeing this, Milky politely said, no. Luckily, we had a backup plan for such an occasion. We contacted Armok Industrial and Manufacturing, owned and operated by local expert doodle artist, DNS. He's a great guy, who sketched up a ship, even managing to incorporate a lion's face into the ship's silhouette. And I appreciate a good silhouette. I'd let her sit on my face. Faced with two options. One, slightly better than the other, Milky put pen to tablet and began work on the third iteration of the Leora. What's the saying? Third time's the ship that fucks like a tree and makes off with the choco lava. And there she was, chiseled, armor plating, curvaceously aligned engines, lusciously sculpted to perfection, the Leora. Laura, so hot right now. It was time to finalize the Lion's Roar. For this, I have to thank Vermi, the UAF's talented coder, because the Lion's Roar, while based on the semi-breathe, is still a significant development that required a lot of back and forth dialogue to achieve the desired effect. To break it down, the Lion's Roar payload is packaged in a heavily armored torpedo. This torpedo can bounce off shields, detonates based on a timer, and has a volatile two-stage detonation. That much you can see with your eyeballs. The torpedo also has some experimental properties which we'll go over later, but let's talk about the payload and detonation. The first implosion creates a brief singularity, pulling surrounding ships and other celestial objects towards the center. The second explosion violently erupts from the unstable payload, scattering that which remains with a concussive blast. When properly detonated within the center of an enemy battle line, the result is pure, unfiltered chaos. To harness this chaotic power, we'll go over the captain's manual for both the Leora and the Lion's Roar weapon system. While the main role of the Leora is disruption of an organized enemy fleet, it can still engage in light direct combat. With four small hybrid, two small missile, and a universal medium mount, the Leora is a swift, albeit lightly armed destroyer. Given sparse weapon mounts, the Leora can safely engage frigates on its own. Otherwise, the Leora should accompany larger vessels, or alternatively be escorted by other factions attack ships. As for the ship system, the Leora is equipped with royal grade maneuvering jets. This system allows the Leora to make necessary maneuvers before firing the lion's roar, or follow up a successful hit with a decisive strike, and it looks damn good while doing it. It should be noted that while the jets are on cooldown, the ship is quite vulnerable and proper positioning should always be on the mind of a Leora captain. Speaking of which, let's talk about the weaknesses of the Leora and how a clever captain might mitigate them. Because so much of the vessel is dedicated to the Lion's Roar weapon, the few mounts the Leora has must be used wisely. Due to the flux core being so far back in the vessel, there was no room for dedicated rear-facing mounts, so proper point defense coverage will be an issue. This is further exacerbated by the fact the Leora's shield only covers the front half of the ship. So installing shield mods, equipping a point defense weapon into the universal medium mount, or utilizing a converted hangar with escort wing are possible defensive solutions. If you are a captain who would prefer a more aggressive role, appropriate escort ships for the Leora can make one hell of a strike team. The Akatsuzuma SP is an excellent example, as it's a fast cruiser that can keep up with the Leora and designate targets to hit with the lion's roar. When it comes to high-level usage of the Roar, that's where things get a little more interesting. While it's generally not recommended to use against a single target, proper placement or mind your enemies. How quickly the tide turns. Place the Roar just behind your enemy and make them take a forced vacation to Favonius. Monitor, be gone. By placing the Roar in front of your enemy, you can pull them closer to your fleet. Get over here! You can also use the natural weight of the Roar torpedo to push ships around. This can be used offensively to get behind a sluggish ship. With perfect placement, you might even combine the weight and explosive effects to spin an onslaught. Defensively, you can push dangerous ships away from you, such as a Pather IED ship. They will fear us! Ah! If you don't pilot ships directly and prefer creating orphans from a distance, I've got you covered. I tested each officer personality in the Leora. We'll start with the reckless officer. How would I describe it? No fear, hot surgeon. Number one, steady hand. 
about what you'd expect from a reckless officer, so eager to fight that they will happily push past you, usually to their own death. Not recommended for the Leora. The aggressive officer loves getting in close and brawling with their enemies, also loves firing the lion's roar at very close ranges. A viable option, just make sure the aggressive officer has plenty of escorts. A steady officer will try to do a little of everything, which will generally come down to how you outfitted the ship, so expect a steady officer to constantly be moving around. From what I observed, they will move in to fire their main weapons, then as they are backing off with high flux, they will send a roar. Certainly the most versatile officer, but also the least predictable. Now the cautious officer is what I found to be the best fit for the Leora. Now why is that? The cautious officer considers the lion's roar to be their primary weapon, and out of all the personalities, will fire it the most often. I've seen the cautious officer get the most successful hits with the roar, and will try to use the royal jets to give themselves an accurate shot. The best part is though, that the cautious officer will still move to engage an enemy that is vulnerable, give a cautious officer expanded missile racks, and they'll be providing useful fire support all battle. Last but not least, the Timid Officer. I'd actually rank the Timid Officer as the second best option after Cautious. Most of the time I'd never recruit a Timid Officer, but here's what they do in the Leora. They will only use their main guns to defend themselves and consider survival their top priority. The good news is they will still fire the roar from a safe distance, and because they avoid direct combat, they will often end up flanking far around the enemy fleet, sending roars in from surprising angles. Paired with long-range bomber carriers, the timid Leora officer can do some surprising damage to an enemy fleet. When it comes to experimental weapons, you probably notice that the Lion's Roar can stick to enemy vessels if they have their shields down. But what if I told you there were other properties the weapon had? The Lion's Roar sticking to enemy vessels was not part of the original plan. As you can see, that was never in the weapon blueprint. I was interested in the idea, and I thought the line would be drawn there. Little did I know, the UAF research and development team had already crossed that line and wanted to see just how far they could go. You didn't hear it from me, but the Lion's Roar is a testbed for future UAF weapons. Experimental 1. The Lion's Roar can stick to enemy holes. This can be utilized to finish off a weakened vessel or designate an ass clap. Imminent collision. The sticky properties are not 100% consistent and can still happen after several bounces. Use this to your advantage where applicable. Experimental 2. Using a depth charge effect, the Lion's Roar explosion can hit phase targets. Now I thought submarine warfare was a thing of the past, but but I guess war never changes. Experimental 3. When the Lion's Roar hits just right, it can pierce shields. I only have a couple recorded instances of this, with the best results from pinning a smaller vessel against a larger one. Honestly, I'm not sure what kind of modding sorcery is contained within the Lion's Roar, and I've come to the assumption that, much like a Bethesda game, it just works. My smooth brain was able to figure out that, much like hanging out next to a Fuso Reina, there are some operational hazards Firing the lion's roar into the back of a friendly ship is not a good idea. Being too close to the detonation is also not a good idea. Firing the lion's roar into the back of a gunship is... I make this sacrifice! Surprisingly effective. But before I start getting comments about Ermagerd, Ironclad, it's so overpowered, the Lion's Roar has a hard counter. A simple flare. And that's right. A flare can stop the Lion's Roar completely, whether that's a low-tech red flare from a pirate ship or a high-tech green smart flare. He's leaking classified intel! Seize him! <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. But what if 30 we are? Barely legible blueprints, three iterations, pain and suffering. These are but mere chapters in the Leora's life. 
But what do I think, now that the ship is complete? After months of meticulous playtesting, I can confidently say the Leora is amazing. I'm incredibly biased, and I don't care, because the more I use it, the more things I discover. After a botched roar, I got half a bombing run thrown back at me. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction, because I realize what this meant. Much like the development of the Leora, each failure a stepping stone to success. A beacon in this dark sector. I asked Milky what the name Leora meant, and he told me it was an Auroran term for Lioness, which is a great name for such a beautiful ship. I also found another meaning, and I laughed because I realized what we had made. Leora. The bringer of light. has been a project several months in the making, and was absolutely a team effort. I highly doubt he'll ever let me do this again, so thank you CY slash Milky Dramata for gifting me this opportunity to design a vessel of the UAF. The man sculpted the ship into what you see before you, so consider sending some love his way if you think he did a good job. I put him through hell, so he certainly deserves it. Massive shout out to Vermi, the UAF's coder working behind the scenes to make this all possible. I'm still impressed by the amount of sorcery she built into the line's roar or American Breve, as some say. She made the weapon what it is, and the final version is some of the most fun I've ever had in Star Sector. Absolutely nailed it, well done. And on behalf of the Star Sector community, thank you. And of course, DNS. Technically not part of the UAF dev team, but he visualized what my words could not, and helped make the Leoro into what it is today. For a simple guppy in a vast ocean of sharks, fuck can he swim? Last and certainly not least, the Iron Patrons for generously funding these videos. You keep the Lion Space Program operational, and for that, I could guess you. The Leora will be in the next public UAF update, along with other sizable content. Alright my friends, I'm Ironclad Lion, and thanks for watching. It's a box, it's a circle, it's fucking embarrassing!